Today we are covering section 3.10, projectile motion application using quadratics. Before we get into our examples, I want to talk about the equation that we use for these. The equation is something that is learned in physics. If you've already taken physics, you may have seen this equation before, although it may have looked a little different because I believe that we use A for acceleration due to gravity here at WAMA. If you haven't taken physics yet, you will use this again at some point during your class. Um, and again, it might look a little bit different, but this is the basic concept of the equation used for projectile motion. To break down this equation a little bit, we have this negative 1 half g, which again we sometimes use as a, times t squared. This negative 1 half g is what we call acceleration due to gravity. Then we have V sub zero T, where V sub zero stands for initial velocity. I'm going to change the color of this and distinguish. So we have initial velocity. And then we have H sub zero, which stands for initial height. And then h on the end is giving us the overall height that we're solving for. And then t is equal to time. Now when you were using this equation at, in physics class, or when you get to physics class, um, you often are solving using meters per second per second for acceleration, which means that instead of this negative one-half a showing up as negative 16, which is what we're going to use today, it would have shown up as negative 5 because we use, in terms of meters per second, um, gravity is approximately 10 meters per second per second, so negative 1 half times 10 would give you that negative 5. In this class, we're going to be working in terms of feet, so as written in example 1, you're going to see we have this negative 16 t squared which is right here, and that is going to give us that acceleration due to gravity in terms of feet. So for this example, we have the height h in feet of a golf ball t seconds after it was hit from the ground can be modeled by the function h of t is equal to negative 16 t squared plus 200 t. Find the time it will take the ball to reach its maximum height and the maximum height of the ball. Okay, so there's two things that we're solving for here. The first is maximum height, and the second is time. Actually, I'm going to do that the other way around. We're going to start with time. So the first thing here, in order to find time at the maximum height, that means that we are looking for where the axis of symmetry is on our quadratic or on our parabola. We also know that t is inputted. This is our... Um, then x value, which is what we've been using in our previous equations. So that means for the axis of symmetry, t is going to be equal to negative b over 2a. So to solve this one, we have negative 200 over 2 times a, which is negative 16. And we know that this is going to simplify down to about 6.6 .6, or exactly 6.6 .6 repeating. In terms of fractions, that would be 6 and 2 thirds seconds, which is what we were trying to find. The second thing that we're solving for is the maximum height. And we know from our previous knowledge on parabolas that the maximum height of a parabola is the vertex. So in this case, that vertex is represented by our x value, which is t, and our y value, which is that h of t, and is sometimes written just as h. So to solve this one, we're going to take our equation, h of t, 
but we're going to input, so we have a value for that t, the time that we found in part a, which is 6 and 2 thirds. And that's why we solved time first, because we knew we were going to need it to get our height or to get that vertex. So I have h of 6 and 2 thirds is equal to negative 16 times 6 and 2 thirds squared plus 200 times t, which is again 6 and 2 thirds. I'm going to just kind of skip through some of our solving here. This simplifies down to give us our height of 622 and 2 ninths feet, which is the other piece that we we're trying to find. So our maximum height is 622 and 2 ninths, and the time it took to get there was 6 and 2 thirds seconds. All right, on to example two. This is going to be solved using zeros of parabolas. So we have a dirt bike launches from a nine foot tall ramp at an initial velocity of 30 feet per second. The height h in feet of the bike t seconds after it launched from the ramp can be modeled by the function h of t equals negative 16 t squared plus 30 t plus nine. After how many seconds will the bike reach the ground? Okay, so the ground in terms of height would tell us that h is equal to zero. So the ground here is zero, giving us this equation. Zero is equal to negative 16t squared plus 30t plus 9. If we were to draw a sketch of this, of what we're looking at, we have this dirt bike launching into the air. This point right here, that is our y-intercept. That's 9 feet. And we're trying to figure out how many seconds it took to get from here to here, from one zero to the other. So we need to solve for our inputs t, which is why I labeled them like that. So we have that first t and the second t. To do this, we're going to need to use one of our methods for solving a quadratic function. And today we're going to use the quadratic formula. So using the quadratic formula, I have that t is going to be equal to negative b which is 30, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's 30 squared, minus 4 times a, which is negative 16, times c, which is 9, all over 2 times a, which was negative 16. When we simplify this, that gives me negative 30, plus or minus, simplifying was under that square root to get 1,476 all over negative 32. I'm going to plug this into my calculator, and when I do, this is going to give me, again, we're solving this as two things. So this is negative 30 plus the square root of 1,476 divided by negative 32, and negative 30 minus the square root of 1,476 divided by negative 32. So when I plug those two things into the calculator, that gives me that time is equal to negative 0.26 and the other one was 2.14. So the question of how many seconds will it take for the bike to reach the ground? Well, it starts at negative 0.26 on the ground and then it gets to the ground again after 2.14 seconds. So it depends on which way you're going on the parabola. If we are going backwards down a ramp, that's where you're going to get that negative 0.26. That doesn't actually make sense if you think about it. So this dirt bike, if we think about it, it's up here on this 9-foot ramp. We're launching 
off the ramp to the ground. We're really only going forward. So this is really the only answer that we care about, but there are two zeros to this parabola, so there is technically two solutions. So we have both of these. All right. In our next example, we have finding the domain and range of projectiles. So we have the height h in feet of a soccer ball, t seconds after it was hit by a player with his head, can be modeled by the function h of t is equal to negative 16 t squared plus 20 t plus 6.5. What is the domain and range of this function? Okay, so we're going to start by drawing a picture here. So if this is our coordinate plane, we have our parabola starting right here. So the soccer ball is hitting the head right there. Then it's going to bounce up and come back down, hit the ground. The domain for possible places where this soccer ball can be in that time frame does actually backtrack past this point down to the x-axis. So to find the domain, you need your zeros or your roots. So the I'm going to make note of that here, that we need the roots or zeros for the domain. And remember, these are possible values not necessarily actual values. So for this, we are again going to be using the quadratic formula because we're trying to find those zeros or the roots. So that means that we have zero is equal to, or sorry, zero is equal to negative 16t squared plus 20t plus 6.5 in our function. Since we're solving for t, we're going to say t is equal to negative b, which is 20, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is, again, 20 squared, minus 4 times a, which is negative 16, times c, which is 6.5, all over 2a, where a is negative 16. So if we simplify this, that gives me negative 20, plus or minus, I'm going to take the square root of that and just typing it into my calculator to give me 28.57 all over negative 32. If we now type that into our calculator to solve both as negative 20 plus 28.57 divided by negative 32 and negative 20 minus 28.57 divided by negative 32, that gives me that t can be equal to negative 0.27 and 1.52. So the domain, these are possible values for this parabola, is going to go from, okay, so yes, we have two zeros because we calculated this. And I may have misspoke with what I was trying to say a moment ago. When we calculate, we do get two zeros. But our actual domain, our possible values, start when that soccer ball is hitting the head. So the domain is actually going to start at zero, even though we have two um, roots of this parabola. We start where your x, or rather t, is equal to zero. So we have zero is less than or equal to t, which is less than or equal to this is where that root over here comes in, where we have actually hit the ground in terms of where the soccer ball can go. So the time it took from where it hit the head to where it would hit the ground would give us 1.52 as our maximum time. So our domain goes from 0 is less than or equal to t, which is less than or equal to 1.52. All right, so that's domain.
for the range, you need the vertex because the vertex is going to give us that maximum point of our parabola. So we're going to start by finding that axis of symmetry. So I know that T is going to be equal to, for the axis of symmetry, negative B over 2A. For this problem, that means that we have negative 20 over 2 times negative 16. If we simplify that, that gives us 5 eighths, which is equal to 0.625 seconds. Now we're going to take that and we're going to plug it into the equation, into that function, to solve for that maximum height. So I have h of 0.625 is equal to negative 16 times 0.625 squared plus 20 times 0.625 plus 6.5. If we simplify that out, that gives me that our maximum height is equal to 12.7 feet. Well, sorry, 12.75. Forgot the 5. All right. So now we know that maximum height, that tells me that the range can go from the ground, which is 0, up until that maximum height. So our range is 0 is less than or equal to h, which is less than or equal to 12.75. And again, remember that h represents height in terms of our function. Okay, we have one more example. In example 4, we're solving for a specific value. So we have the height h in feet of a baseball, t seconds after it is thrown, can be modeled by the function h of t is equal to negative 16 t squared plus 86 t plus 5. If the ball is caught when it is 2 feet from the ground, and if we're 2 feet from the ground, that means our height is equal to 2, how long was the ball in the air? This part tells us that we are looking for a time. We don't know what that time is, so that's what we need to find. So this means that we can take that value of 2, and we're going to plug it into our function. So I have 2 is equal to negative 16t squared plus 86t plus 5. Okay? So... Now we have this equation for a parabola. All of our methods for solving, well, I guess not all, but the method of solving that we're going to use, we want this equation to be set equal to zero. So the very first thing we're going to do is subtract the on each side. And that gives me zero is equal to negative 16t squared plus 86t plus 3. And that is the function that I'm going to be solving with. And I'm going to plug that into the quadratic formula. So I have t is equal to negative b, which is 86, plus or minus the square root of b squared, that would be 86 squared, minus 4 times a, which is negative 16, times c, which is 3, all over 2a where a is negative 16, which simplifies to negative 86 plus or minus the square root of 7,588 all over negative 32. At this point, if we solve through this with our two options, we have negative 86 plus the square root of 7,588, all divided by negative 32, and negative 86 minus the square root of 7,588, all divided by negative 32. This gives us two solutions. So I have t is equal to negative 0.03 and 541. So those are the two times 
that our uh, baseball would have been two feet from the ground. And again, those would be in seconds. This is where we're going to wrap it up, and this concludes our Unit 3 covering quadratics.